Hey friends, back with you today in this video where we're gonna talk about Power Apps component, enhanced properties, the event property, but more specifically, the return data types that are associated to the event property. So uh, event properties and action properties both have return data types. You implement them in different ways, but they're super cool. They essentially allow like a round trip between the app and the component or the component and the app, uh, which really increases the efficiency and the functionality of being able to utilize these properties and components uh, to be able to be reactive. So really excited to show it off to you. Let's dive in. First things first, who am I? I'm David Warner. Uh, I do some videos and some blogs and I work a lot in the community, big fan of the community and all of the amazing work that all of you do work for Quisitive. I'm an MVP, Microsoft certified trainer. So uh, reach out if you'd love to collaborate, love working with each and every one of you in the community and thank you for all that you are doing. So the agenda for our video here today is we're going to talk about component libraries as an overview. Again, I kind of beating a dead horse there. <laughs> but they're super valuable and I wanna make sure everybody understands them going in. Uh, we're gonna talk about event properties, uh, overview of the actual property itself, and then we're also gonna talk about the return data types, how uh, you can benefit from them, and then we'll actually jump into an actual demo of how you can implement a revent, an event property return data type and the value that it brings and stuff like that. All right, cool. All right, so first up is what exactly is a component library? Well, it's this independent entity within Power Apps. It essentially houses one or more components that you can create, and then that component library and or the components within it can be imported into multiple apps. Now, you can no normally make a component in, in an individual app if you want, but that component only lives there. By putting it into a library, you can allow those components to be imported into multiple apps. That's great and awesome already. Makes you want to go, holy cow! That's right, holy cow. But then what's even better is when you need to make changes to those components, you only need to make it within the component library. And any apps that have imported those components will be alerted that a change has taken place and can update to get the most recent changes. Scalability, consistency, super, super cool. Look into them, I've got more videos, so please take a look at them. Reach out if you have any questions. These are some of my favorite things within Power Apps. Super, super cool. If you're not using them, you definitely should be. All right, so let's talk about the event property. Event properties are similar to action properties, whereas uh, one entity, meaning the component, can alert the app that an event has happened. So what happens is you have something going on inside of your component. You associate an event property to that. And then on the app side, you can be alerted when that event takes place. Right. So it's like the component saying, hey, app, something has happened within the component. Now you can define the functionality that occurs when that event happens. And what's cool is you can pass parameters into the actual app side so we can do something with that content. Pretty cool. That's kind of like this one trip opportunity. Right. But it gets better. So the benefits are obviously that you can alert the app, something's happened, give it content using a parameter and let it do whatever it wants to do. Now, you add in the benefit of the return data type and what happens is now your app can return something back to the component and then the component can do something with that. So now instead of just a one, a one way trip from the component to the app, do something, you're now able to make a trip from the component to the app do something and then the app can return data back to the component and that component can do something else with that data. Super cool, really expands the opportunity of these two event proper or these two property types, action and event. Uh, and so we'll see what that looks like. So what does that demo look like? What are we gonna do? Well, we're going to display a share count of badges uh, on social networks. And then instead of just that being the end of it, we're going to return the sharing status. So what's gonna happen is the component is gonna notify the app when an event occurs in the component. In this case, we're gonna be clicking buttons within the component. The app defines the logic that is performed once that button click takes place or once that event takes place. But now we're before that was the end of the story, using a return data type, the story increases and we're now able to say, okay, the app has done something with that event and or the parameters passed over to it. Now it's going to pass content back to the component after the app performs any logic and the component can do whatever it wants with that. So it's a true round trip experience, really allowing you to go back and forth between your component and your app to make the best use of that new architecture. So let's dive in, take a look. All right, so here we are in Power Apps. Let me set the context just so we understand exactly what we're looking at. We're using our badges again. We've got the SharePoint Hackathon being displayed. We're currently looking at the component side. 
right? So in my component, I've got the display of the badge. I've got three buttons here for X, LinkedIn, and Blue Sky. I've also got a component property. So this is an event property, right? Pretty bare bones. Uh, it simply is set up to be an event property and the display type is currently, or excuse me, the return data type is currently none, right? Now I do have two parameters, uh, click count and social network name. So these tie to each of these, obviously. And what happens is when each of these is clicked, it supplies the parameters that then get sent to the app. Because what I'm doing is I'm alerting the app that something has taken place when on the component side, I execute this particular event property. And we'll see what that looks like in a minute. Uh, but because I want it to be the same event property for each of these buttons, we can use the parameter uh, and then supply that parameter value. So what does that look like? Well, let me cancel that, close this. When I look at the actual value of the event property, it's nothing right now because the remember the app is what's going to identify the execution of that. So I don't really need it to do anything right now. The app is the one that's going to do that work. And then on each of these, when I click on them, what I do is I do use the notify, right? So uh, again, pretend that the actual link is being used to instantiate sharing to Blue Sky. In this case, I'm just using notify to show that it's actually happening. And then I'm setting up a uh, parameter, excuse me, a variable that just in, in, in increases each time it's clicked. And then here is where that event property is being executed. And I pass in that count. Right. So that's getting passed over to my actual uh, over to my app. And so is the social network name. Right. And that's happening for each one of these. So as I click on each one, I've got a variable to keep track of each one of these. And then what you don't see right yet is that those numbers are being displayed right here. Right. Uh, and so there's X count, X count is uh, generated there and created there. And then I pass that value back into my app so that the app can do something with that information. Maybe the information is being stored in a database to track how many times uh, the person has shared or the user has shared on each of these networks, right? We're not going to do that within the component, but we could do that within our app. The app will have the data connection and all that. And so we want to pass that information back onto the app. Side. Okay, awesome. So that is explaining what's going on in our component currently. And of course, remember that is with the data type return or return data type set to none, right? Forgot to mention that. So if I go back to my event properties here on the component uh, and I click on that property, we see we've got the return data type set to none. That's the default. So that means uh, that once my app executes whatever it does that it executes when the component notifies that this event was fired, that's the end of the transaction. We're done at that point. Uh, but again, how does that look on the app side currently? Well, I'll go over to the screen. We've got uh, our screen here. It's being displayed. There's our component. We've got that component right there. And if I click on the component and we go into the event prop increment social, that is the name of our property, we can see we have access to those two parameters, right? So there's the social network uh, event property social or parameter name, there's the click count. So those are being passed to my particular uh, app from the component. And I'm just using a notify right now. Again, pretend that I would be uh, executing some update to database or whatever. And in this case, I'm, I'm doing it as an if, right? So instead of um, checking for each one and doing something separately, which you'd probably do in real life, I'm just simply making it simple. Uh, simply simple. Yep, yep. No, 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 no. Tripping over my words. Simply simple. Uh, I'm making it an if, and I'm looking for the actual clicking of LinkedIn. Uh, if it is LinkedIn that's clicked, it's going to give me that click count, right? And I'm going to see that in a notification. If not, it's going to say LI not clicked, right? So currently that is how we're setting up no return type. So if I click on alt and I click LinkedIn, uh, do uh, database update for LinkedIn, right? I click on X. We still see things incrementing here. That's great. LI not clicked. I click on LinkedIn again. And now we see that number is incrementing, right? We saw it was one before. Now it's two. It is mapping to that. So we're getting those values back in. So that's the end of the transaction. But what if we wanted to make this that round trip that once this is completed, 
once I've actually maybe gone and updated the database or whatever action I want to take, I now want to send information back to the component from the app side. So let's say, for example, I go update the component or update the database with whatever's being passed to me from the component. And then I want to pass a recognition sentence or some sort of, hey, this person has leveled up and now they're known as a sharing sorcerer or something like that, right? I want to pass that information back into my component and I want that to be displayed right here. Now I could certainly layer over this within the app. I could add a label here that's layered over and I could do that all within the app, but that's extra work that the app then has to take into account. We could create it in a component and again, all that is just done once uh, and we just pass in what we want, right? Okay, so how do we make that happen? Well, first thing is we need to go back into our component. We need to go back to our property, uh, our event property, and we need to change the return data type. So again, a uh, quick tip, if you're going to do that and you have anything in here, which of course right now we have nothing, you want to copy it out because it's going to replace it with something, whatever the data type is, it's going to put in the default value. So it's going to replace whatever you have here. You'll see that in the action video, a little more important there. But if you do have anything here uh, that you're setting up as a default, then it will get replaced with whatever you change the return type to. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this return type to text because what we want to happen is we want the app to return some sort of sentence or label or whatever the case may be back into the component so that the component can display it, right? So I'm gonna say text, scroll up to the top, select text. So now we've got that good to go. I'm gonna hit save. It's gonna say, are you sure? Yes, may cause errors on controls that depend on it. Yes, we've not really utilized it yet, so we're fine, we're good to go. Okay, so you see now it replaces that with text. Okay, so the expectation here is that while text is the default, it doesn't need to be, right? So we could remove that if we want to in scenarios where it's it's warranted. So in this case, text could be blank. Uh, but what, what happens is that it is expecting a return type, right? It is expecting that it is going to get returned text. So if I were to change this to something like, uh, you know, like a, a, a record for say, right? A key uh, value, we can see that it's erroring. And when I hover over that, it says, hey, it's expected text value. So it is respecting the return data type that we're going to provide. Now, this is just the default value that we would have in there. By default, ideally, it's not the default value that would be displayed. It's whatever the app is returning as the value. So for our purposes here, I'm just going to, again, keep this blank. I, I don't need it to be displaying anything. But how, when the app returns data to this particular property, how do we get that return type? Because originally it just simply executed it and then we were done with it, right? The app executed the functionality, it ended inside the app, but now the app is going to return it back, is going to return something. So first things first, we're gonna go down to the LinkedIn button where we are executing that function, right? So we're executing our event property here inside of each of these buttons, but we're gonna focus on LinkedIn for now. Um, and we've got that ex ex uh, execution of that function, right? We're passing back to the app the count uh, and which social network we're doing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment that out because again, declaratively, this is where we would be getting back that return type, but how do we access the return type of this function when the app is done? Well, we can do that by putting it into a variable, right? So I'm simply going to say set event return data, and then I'm executing that just like I was right there, right? So, so this is essentially doing the same thing we're doing right there, but because this now returns a value, it's returning it back to here and I can use that variable somewhere else. So we know it's gonna return text, it's gonna return some string, uh, or it's gonna tell us that we're sharing value or whatever the case may be. And we'll see what that looks like in a moment. But now I've got that, that variable. And we know it's text because I see it right there. Uh, if I come over to here and I go to component variables, and I go to that, we see var event return data. I have that right there. It tells me it's blank because I haven't clicked anything yet, but it knows to be expecting that as a variable, right? Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take that variable and I'm gonna put it into a label that you didn't see, but I've got right here, right? So if I go back to my component, I've got this label and for the text property, I'm going to set it equal to var return data. 
right? So now what should happen is when I click on LinkedIn, it's going to let my app know that that button was clicked. It's going to pass the count and the social that I have uh, added into the click event or the on select event or property here, right? So it's going to pass the count. It's going to pass LinkedIn. And then when the app finishes, whatever it's going to do associated to this, it's going to return text to me in this variable, right? So whatever that return value is, again, gets passed back into that and variable. And that variable is going to be displayed right up here. Okay, so that's wiring it all up on the component side. What about the screen or the app itself, right? Where do I have that happen? Well, again, it is on that property. So I come back over into my app, there's my property, and uh, you'll notice that it is a blank here. And so you may be saying to yourself, well, wait, didn't we have some sort of functionality here that was notifying do update database? It was an if statement for LinkedIn. Yes. So that goes back to my tip. Remember, when I reset the return type it, and then modified that value, it reset here too, right? So you want to make sure you have all your code copied out, stored somewhere. If you've got it and it's elaborate, you don't want to lose that. So I'm going to, I'm going to paste it back in, but first I want to show that it is aware it knows that it needs to return a text right so if I do the same thing again I come over here and I say key uh, value right just showing like a record it gives me an error and when I click or hover over that it says expected text value so it does know hey I can't just do anything I want well I can almost do anything I want but it does at least need to return text back to the uh, back to the event property within the component so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this I'm going to paste in what was originally there, right? And so it is notifying, yes, that is good to go. So now I'm also going to uh, just paste in a simple message here, right? So I'm going to go down here uh, and I'm going to do that. And essentially, I'm going to say congrats on sharing to and the social network name. So I'm still able to use that parameter. So now what should happen is when I click on LinkedIn, it should absolutely then populate that label that's within my component. So let me go ahead and click on that button. Yay, congrats to sharing to LinkedIn. Of course, I missed putting the space there, right? So got to remember to do that too, right? So I do that and I see that if I click again, bam, fixes it. And of course, I see the update to number two going on, right? So that is cool. Okay, so is that it? So what's happening is it is returning this value right here back to my component once it's completed, right? So now that completes and fulfills that round trip, the app, or I should say the component is being clicked on. It's notifying my app that something happened, right? So that uh, event a fired, I'm doing something with it. So in this case, I'd be say updating the database and then I am making the decision to return something. So in this case, it's just a simple string that I'm returning, but I am using the actual prop or parameter there as part of that return, which is pretty cool. Well, I could get more uh, complex with this. So let's do that, right? So let's say, for example, that I want it to say something else if they're uh, shared more than 10, right? And maybe we're tracking this over time instead of just, you know, clicking 10 rapidly in succession. But uh, point being that we're going to say something else once it gets to 10, right? So now I'm saying if click count is greater than 10, you're sharing master on the social network. Or if not, congrats on your post to the social network. Okay, cool. So now as I click this, it's going to replace that all together because I just changed it, obviously. Uh, but I'm going to click this. So great. Congrats on your post to LinkedIn. So now if I get all the way up to 10, should still say the same thing. Now, as I get to 11, it should say you're a sharing master. Boom. You're a sharing master on LinkedIn, right? So again, you can create some robust functionality that happens as ex exchange between the component and the app. That round trip is occurring and it's super, super cool because it's not just a one-way destination. The event fires in the component, lets the app know, the app does something, and then the app returns information to the component and can do something else. So it's a really cool experience. Take advantage of this, take, be on the lookout, do more with it, gonna create some more videos, really excited about this functionality. Um, please like and subscribe, let me know in the video. Hopefully you've found value in this. Uh, be on the lookout, like I said, for more. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.